Greetings of peace and a very, very happy Diwali for all of you. This year, we need to light the light in different circumstances. The world is going through a huge problem at the moment, the worst economic recession in the last hundred years. It's also uh, put to, to the test this tiny little virus, which is, you know, one uh, 10,000 times smaller than a grain of salt, has put humanity against the world. So that is the reason why we have to celebrate Diwali in a different way this year. I've been in India at the time of Diwali many times, maybe 20 or 30 times, and I've always appreciated the colour, the festivity, the sweets, the love that people have, the fraternal spirit that you can feel in the air, the lightness of mood. People are genuinely trying to create something better. And so they wish each other the best. They have good wishes for each other. And very similar to the period in the Christian world, which is Christmas and New Year. Again, it's about a week of celebrations and Diwali is five days, but before Diwali, after Diwali, maybe some of the parties continue. This year, even the parties will be smaller because of the restrictions of social distancing and masks and so on. But even then, you know, the, the, symboli the symbolic nature of Diwali is very, very important to understand. It's a common theme that we can see many of the festivals in different traditions even, not just Hinduism. But many traditions have a celebration which they, they recognize the coming of light and the destruction of darkness. It means the light of knowledge, the light of understanding, and the conquering of the darkness of ignorance. And in India, as far as I understand, there are different Events, some of them are real, some of them are mythical, that are celebrated. The, the marriage of Lakshmi Narayan, for example. The perfect man and the perfect woman. They come together. The epitome of human behavior. And so very important that we remember that that is possible. You know, the, the, the male, the female, the two sides of, of of even the soul itself. We have some masculine characteristics, we also have some feminine characteristics. But in the marriage of Lakshmi Narayan, the perfection is there, the balance is there, the the you know, the connection is there, the equality is there. You don't say one is better than the other. And so at these religious festivals there are always things, some of the things, of course, are mythical, for example, and therefore very symbolic. The theme of uh, someone being exiled when they had the right to the kingdom, and then in that exile going through so many adventures and fighting all sorts of demons to get back to the kingdom. That's a theme, it's one of the archetypes of many stories that human beings have had in different traditions. There was a king in the Odyssey of, of Homer, a Greek myth. The king was called Ulysses, and he had to go somewhere else to fight, fight other battles. But to get back to his kingdom, to get back to his home, he had to fight through so many giants and 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 um, horrible creatures different challenges and finally he get back to his kingdom so one of the 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 symbols of the victory of light over darkness and which is celebrated is the victory of, of rama king rama and his army of monkeys and others over ravan again the virtuous one conquering the demon and Ravana, of course, is a symbol of the vices, anger, greed, lust, ego, attachment. 
10 ahead, so you've got 5 in a woman, 5 in a man, right? And of course, Ra Rama, after um, conquering Ravan and, and, and being able to retrieve his wife had been, who'd been kidnapped, very triumphantly they returned to Ayodhya, which is his capital. And so Diwali in some parts of India remembers this particular part of the victory of uh, light over darkness. In other parts of India, as far as I understand, there's, there's a celebration of uh, Sri Krishna's um, killing of one very, very terrible demon called Narakasur using the Swadashan Chakra. So again, symbolic. The Swadashan Chakra, Swa means self, Darshan means to see the self, Chakra. Chakra is the wheel. So to see the self over time, to see the self over the cycle of birth and rebirth, to understand the self, in other words. So it's not a physical weapon that chops off people's heads, but it's a spiritual weapon that chops off the heads of our own vices. By understanding things, I conquer my own darkness of ignorance. The real deep spiritual significance of all of these festivals is put to the side and we just keep the trappings, we just keep the superficial um, arrangements rather than the real deep meaning of it. So what does it mean to clean out your house? Which house? Not just our physical house, it's this house, right? What does it mean to put on new clothes? Not just these clothes, but it's to cover the self with newness, to cover the soul with newness. And what does it mean to light up the lights and to keep them alight? It's probably not very auspicious if the lights go out. That, why? Because it's not auspicious if I forget who I am. So many of these practices represent different ideals. For example, at this time, people try to make the past as past, which reflects on, you know, we, the desire to go ahead, the desire to progress, the desire to be better. Let the past be the past. In some villages, as far as I understand, people try to uh, f forgive and forget the different things that, that have happened at that time. They get up early in the morning at the time that we call in the Brahma Kori, Kumari's Amrit Bella, the time of the Amrit. So we meditate from four to five every day. And of course, it's very healthy to do that. So it's not just something you should do at the time of Diwali, it's something that you carry on throughout the year. Um, what does it mean to have so many sweets? Of course, that's what we have to be with each other. We have to be sweet and not just make sweets and give sweets to people. We have to become sweet ourselves and offer ourselves to people. So there's lots of little details in the whole festival as far as I understand, like uh, the, the many merchants and, uh, and um, business people they close the book of their old accounts and they open a fresh book. And they, of course, they pray for prosperity. They pray for, for, you know, that things will go better. But it's not a question of praying, you know. What we have to do is to create an internal state, which automatically attracts the sort of things that we need. Uh, the, the universe will never, um, uh, not give me what I need, but I have to attract it. What I need is not the same thing as what I want. What I need for me, my family, uh, my community, my world, what do we need? The universe means our relationship with the world and, and matter will give us what we need. So it's not just a question of praying, it's a question of attracting these things and helping people to become better than what they are at the moment.
So a very difficult time. I know it's difficult. There's a lot of panic, a lot of fear, a lot of uncertainty in the world. But in spite of all of that, in spite of everything that's going on, I have a duty to keep myself alight and to help light others. So in the spirit of that, I wish you a very, very happy Diwali again. Om Shanti. Aye, is Diwali Sanskar Parivartan ka utsav manaye.